Welcome everyone to Mayo Clinic q and I'm Dr. Helena Gazelka. We've known since the beginning of the COVID-19 outbreak that the virus that causes COVID-19 can cause significant lung damage. The sickest COVID patients often require lung support from a ventilator or from extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, otherwise known as ECMO. Now some patients have recovered from COVID but sustained permanent lung damage and are even being treated with lung transplant. Here to discuss this interesting topic with us today is Dr. Sadia Shah, a transplant pulmonologist and critical care physician at the Mayo Clinic in Florida. Welcome, Dr. Shah. Thank you so much for having me here. Well, I know a lot of patients had a lot of questions about this. I'm glad we're doing this. Yes, it's wonderful. It's, I learn something new every time that, that I interview someone and I, I have so enjoyed it. And it seems like we learn more about COVID all of the time. So it's very pertinent to, to keep up. Dr. Shaw, can you tell us a little bit about what damage COVID-19 does to the lungs? So as we all know, that COVID, lungs are one of the major organs that are involved with COVID infection. It can vary depending on if it's a mild disease versus a severe disease. And in mild cases, you can have something similar to common cold symptoms with runny nose or throat. In other cases, you can have asthma-like symptoms like shortness of breath, coughing, chest pain, whereas in severe cases, your lungs can be significantly inflamed from the disease, uh, leading to pneumonia, and it makes the job of the lungs much, much harder, which is to be able to do gas exchange, that is to oxygenate the lungs and get rid of carbon dioxide. So in some patients, it may need oxygen. Some patients may even need assistance from a mechanical ventilator. And in severe cases, the lungs, we need to place patients on a machine called ECMO to be able to oxygenate the, uh, the patient. Does um, COVID affect both of the lungs equally? This is definitely a new, uh, uncharted territory for all of us. And uh, we are still learning a lot about it. In most cases, both the lungs are involved, uh, but they can vary from patient to patient. So in some patients, one lung can be involved more than the other one. So uh, it's, it's definitely something that we are still learning and it's a lot to learn there. Why do some people have such significant lung damage and other people have none? So it depends upon how bad uh, was the lung damage from the COVID infection. So if the patient has a mild disease with mild inflammation of the lungs, the likelihood that the patient will recover most of their lung function will be higher. Whereas if the damage is severe, some portions of the lungs may recover back to normal, while others may show scarring of the lungs, also known as pulmonary fibrosis. Now, this scarred lung will not function anymore like a normal lung and will not be able to help the patient get oxygen or get rid of the carbon dioxide. And that's the thing that we always worry about. And in the future, these are the patients who may need a transplant. How do you know if a patient is a good candidate to have a lung transplant or not? Uh, there are only a handful of lung transplants that have been done so far globally, so very little is known about this subject. Having said that, it is very important that the patient is given time to be able to fully recover from the initial infection and also time for the lungs to also heal. So like we talked about that COVID causes in inflammation of the lungs, you want uh, to give the patient time to be able to help that lung recover. Some of the lung will recover to normal, whereas some of the lung will lead to scarring. The patients who will have significant amount of scarring in the end will be the patients who will eventually need a lung transplant in the future. Do you think it's possible that there will be a significant demand for lung transplants in the future? So as you can imagine, globally, there are millions and millions of patients who have been infected with this infection. And even if we feel that there's a very small fraction of patients who will eventually develop a scarring of their lungs, it's still going to be a big enough number. So if all of these patients um, might have varying degree of disease, but the ones with significant amount of scarring will eventually be the ones who will need lung transplant in the future. So I'm foreseeing that the number, the need will definitely increase in the future. What is the survival rate after a lung transplant? How, how successful are they? According to the latest um, uh, data that we have from the International Heart and Lung Transplant Registry, 
the one year survival post lung transplant is about 85% or so, whereas uh, the five year survival post lung transplant is about 60%. So uh, we want to be able to only transplant patients who definitely have significant amount of lung disease, whereas uh, we would want to avoid transplanting patients who are doing fine otherwise and have recovered from the initial insult that they got from the inflammation that the COVID leads to. What are some of the other uh, more common indications for someone to need a lung transplant? So there are several causes for uh, why somebody will need a lung transplant. So you can have pulmonary fibrosis, and you can have COPD, cystic fibrosis, pulmonary hypertension, and basically any lung disease that causes significant amount of lung damage, which is irreversible. And that's the reason why we would consider that patient for lung transplant. So even we have seen that, for example, in certain cases when you have severe infection that can lead to something called adult respiratory distress syndrome, uh, that eventually resolves into a lot of scarring of the lungs. So even those patients are then considered for lung transplant. So similarly in COVID, which leads to an infection and can lead to a lot of scarring in the lungs in the future, once the lungs heal, then these patients would be patients who can be considered for lung transplant in the future. What sort of new and upcoming things do you see in the field of lung transplantation? Uh, there are several uh, things that are currently being done in lung transplant. So I, we, we have had so many changes in the period management of lung transplant patients, also in the post of management of complications that can happen. So I feel like you're fairly comfortable with that. Having said that, I think our biggest victory has been our ability to, to be able to accept different kinds of donor pools. So patients who were donors who were initially deemed not suitable candidates for transplant uh, are now being used. That has definitely helped a lot of our patients who are waiting on the wait list for possible suitable donors to become available. One of the things that has come up is ex vivo lung transplant. And, uh, and that's something that I feel like is going to be the new thing and which will help most of our patients in the future. I'm aware that Mayo has a lung restoration center, and I'm wondering if you could share with um, our listeners a little bit about that and what it is. So I think this is one of the most fabulous things that is uh, a fabulous and exciting thing that's happening currently in our Mayo Clinic. So we have uh, developed a lung restoration center at Mayo Clinic along with collaboration with United Therapeutics. So uh, in this lung restoration center, we use ex vivo lung perfusion to be able to restore marginal lungs that otherwise would not be used for transplant. And uh, in this way, we are able to transplant a lot more lungs than we could otherwise. So in the future, as you can see with COVID pandemic, uh, a lot of patients um, I would say a lot more patients would need lung transplant. So it's very, very important for us to be able to provide enough organs uh, to be able to get our patients transplanted faster. And uh, in this lung restorative center, uh, ex vivo perfusion is just one of the things that we're doing. There's several other new research and innovations that are being done uh, to help patients with end-stage lung diseases. It's really very interesting. Thank you for sharing with us. So our thanks to Dr. Sadia Shah transplant pulmonologist and critical care physician at the Mayo Clinic in Florida. Mayo Clinic Q&A is a production of the Mayo Clinic News Network and is available wherever you get and subscribe to your favorite podcasts. To see a list of all Mayo Clinic podcasts, visit newsnetwork.mayoclinic.org. Then click on podcasts. Thanks for listening and be well. We hope you'll offer a review of this and other episodes when the option is available. Comments and questions can also be sent to Mayo Clinic News Network at mayo.edu.